Bandcraft Generator is a wonderful tool to develop an understanding of electric fields and voltage. When turned on, we'll develop a positive charge, therefore an electric field will be radiating out. And if this was a positive test charge, moving towards it would increase the voltage. But the problem is, you can't see the electric field lines. Is there a better way to visualize electric fields to help develop a better understanding of voltage? Now, before I introduce you to my visual model, I'm going to quickly review a mathematical model of electric field and voltage that helps set the scene for the model that I'm about to present. Now, you'll see I have here a graph of the electric field strength, which is a function really of electric field and distance. And in this case, it's a positive test charge. You can see I'm using Desmos. You've got this lovely inverse square relationship for the electric field. And if I make my A value here, which is related to the charge, I have a negative test charge. You can see it flips into the lower axis like so. What I also have is the voltage, and you'll see the voltage is now slightly different in shape. I'll turn off the electric field graph, and you see here the voltage is simply the electric field strength multiplied by the distance. And so I have a D squared in the electric field, and I only have a D in the voltage graph. This looks very surprising to the shape of my space-time simulator, which I'll introduce very shortly. But I do want to highlight one thing before I go on, and that is, is that the electric field is actually equal to the negative of the derivative of the voltage. And so if I turn on my formula there, which is actually derivative, and I just turn off the voltage, you'll see that my electric field formula and also the derivative of my voltage, they're in essence the same graph. And so what that means is, is if I am looking at my voltage graph like this, the electric field strength can be described by the slope of this particular curve, which is the voltage in this case. And so that now gives us a grounding in understanding the idea of the height of this particular graph being the voltage and the slope of this graph being the electric field. Similarly, if I go into a negative charge, then you'll see that in this case, my slope is always positive. My electric field, in this case, the slope is always positive. And in this case, my voltages are all negative in this case. And that sets the scene for my space-time simulator as a way of understanding electric fields and voltage. So here what I have is my gravity or space-time simulator, which I use to demonstrate Einstein's general theory of relativity, at least in a simplistic understanding of how mass distorts space-time. Now I have a video on that, and it also includes instructions on how to make this. But today I'm going to be talking about how this can be used to demonstrate electric fields and also voltage. The first thing is, is that if there's no electric field, there is no differences in voltage. And so this is representative by the fact that this surface is completely flat. And we're gonna make the surface here a value of zero. That is the voltage of zero. And the slope of the surface represents the strength of the electric field. So in this case, the slope is actually zero as well. No electric field, no changes in voltage, and therefore we have everything zero. But what do I need to do in order to demonstrate a positive test charge? So here what I have now is a representation of the field with a positive charge in the center. And in essence, what I have is an inverted potential well. And in essence, it demonstrates both the electric field and the voltage. Now the voltage represents the height above the surface. And as I said before, the voltage is zero when it's completely flat. And so in this case, this will only become completely flat at a point of infinity away. And I haven't got a material that it goes that big enough. So you're gonna just have to take my word for it. This is going to be a close approximation. And so since the ball is sitting fairly high, it actually is sitting at a higher voltage. The electric field strength, in which this case is radiating out, is determined by my slope of the surface. And so now what we have is an opportunity to visualize an electric field. Obviously not in three dimensions, but now the surface gives us at least a two-dimensional model of the electric field and also the voltage. Now, the voltage is represented by the height that the ball sits above the surface. If you remember, the surface is actually zero, and so therefore the voltage anywhere along the surface 
from the level of the ring here is going to be a positive value because we are moving upward in this case. The slope represents the electric field strength. And so the electric field is much stronger here because the slope is much stronger. So again, height is voltage and the slope or the gradient of the surface is the electric field strength. But now we're in a position to talk about what a positive test charge will do or what we do in terms of the work. So we use this red ping pong ball to represent our positive test charge, which means that if I move it from away from infinity, when the voltage is zero, to a point, let's say, within the field here, I've raised my red ball. I've raised its gravitational potential energy. In the model here, I have raised its potential energy in terms of electrical potential energy and if we divide it by the test charge we have raised its voltage which is the definition which is the work done by bringing it from a point of infinity to somewhere within the field but we're really only interested in changes in the voltage within the field well we can start by saying what's the value for the voltage here and let's say it's 100. I do work on it and I bring it up to a higher position so now the voltage might be a higher value so let's say it's 300 and of course the change in this case is 200 volts in other words i have done 200 joules per unit charge of work on my charge to move it from point here to a point here if i let it go of course what happens is it will roll down and so therefore goes from a higher voltage to a lower voltage and so therefore that work is done by the field in this case that causes an increase in kinetic energy the charge will accelerate away and that's consistent with our understanding of coulomb's law important point here is is that my voltage is always positive and so it's a zero at the level over here but of course anywhere further higher it's going to be an increase in the positive direction but what if I have a negative charge? So now what you can see is I've inverted the situation. I now have a true potential well. And in this case, this represents, at least in two dimensions, of a negative charge. First thing I want you to note is that now my voltage is always going to be negative. Remember, my level of the surface of the ring represents zero volts, where the slope, the electric field strength, is also zero. Now what we're getting is a slope that is going inwards. And in this case, the actual distance is down and so therefore becomes negative which is important so around a negative test charge the voltage are always described with a negative value if i do work on my positive test charge in this case the fact is that the positive charge is attracted to the negative charge i have to push it against the field i have to push it up the hill and so therefore from negative 400 to negative 100 i have an increase of 300 volts or 300 joules per coulomb and therefore i am doing work on the charge for that to take place. If I allow it to roll from there to there, I've allowed it to go from negative 100 to negative 300, I have lost 200 volts. In other words, that has resulted in an increase in the kinetic energy of the charge. In this case, it accelerates towards the charge that's over there. It's important to note that our understanding and descriptions of voltage and electric field strength in this model or in, in fields in general is always determined by using a positive test charge. So with a positive test charge, we said, of course, we have to do work against the field and therefore the voltage increases this way and the voltage decreases this way as we allow the field to do work on it. But if we talk about an electron, of course, the charge is reversed. And so in this case, the electron would be attracted to the positive chase charge. And so as a result, it would actually roll up the hill by the fact that it's oppositely charged. And so therefore, we talk about electrons gaining kinetic energy as it moves from a lower voltage to a high voltage. Why? Because we talk about voltages as they were described with positive test charge. Similarly speaking, if I want to do work on my electron, I'm actually moving it from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. And what about my electron in a field that is due to a negative charge? Again, as our discussion prior, is that the field is described in terms of a positive test charge. In this case, my negative charge would be repelled by that negative charge, and so therefore it would, would go up the hill of its own accord. It's repelled by it. And so therefore it rolls up the hill 
gaining kinetic energy. If I want to do work, I have to push it, in this case, with the field lines. Why? Because the field lines is determined by a positive test charge, and so therefore the work done is going in that direction. So that's the important consideration when you're talking about electrons, the language you use is still consistent with a positive test charge. That gives now a visual representation of the electric field. The fact that this material occurs allows you to see the effect of what the electric field and thereby also what the voltage does in that particular field. Of course, it's got limitations. This is not a perfect hyperbola based on the mathematical formulas that describes both the electric field strength and the voltage. And of course, the most obvious glaring limitation is that this is a two-dimensional model when in fact that the electric field is a three-dimensional space. Nonetheless, hopefully this will give you a visual representation that will strengthen your understanding of electric field strength and the voltage that the voltage changes that occurs as those charges move within that field. Well, I hope that has helped you understand electric field strength and the changes in voltage as you move charges within that field. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you and please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.